I have always wanted to find out what books Tolkien liked to read and I couldn't find any videos online so I decided to make one myself. Today I will go over the books and authors Tolkien appreciated or was inspired by. I have done a lot of preparation, made a lot of notes and so I hope you forgive me for looking down once in a while. The first book on my list is George MacDonald, The Princess and the Goblin. This book is a children's fantasy novel and it was published in 1872. I actually read this one because I knew Tolkien loved it and he read it to his kids, I think. The story follows the adventures of a young princess named Irene and a boy named Curdy, and together they confront goblins and uncover a hidden thread to the kingdom. I decided to read it and I can say that I enjoyed it tremendously. It is a beautiful story and even as an adult very engaging, even, even if it's a children's novel. I didn't expect to like it. And I did, so I highly recommend you checking this one out. The second work of literature that Tolkien appreciated was Beowulf, author unknown. Um, it was an old English epic poem. It dates from the early medieval period and they believe it has been composed between the 8th and 11th centuries. I decided to read Beowulf too and I enjoyed it so much. I actually have a video on this. If you're interested, go and check that out. It is one of the most important works in the Anglo-Saxon literature and it is considered one of the most important poems in the English language. The poem is about Beowulf who is a hero and he travels to the halls of a king to defeat a creature named Grendel. This creature has been terrorizing the kingdom and devouring the warriors. The third book I have for you is John Ingelsand by Joseph Henry Shorthouse. I didn't read this book so I don't know if I would like it but I read the description and it doesn't sound like something I would read, so I don't think I will in the future. It is a historical novel and it was written in 1881 and maybe it might be of interest to you, so I will read what it's about. The novel is set in the 17th century of England and this was a time where there was a lot of political and religious upheaval, um, including the English Civil War and the Restoration period. The protagonist is John Ingelsand and he is a young man who becomes embroiled in the religious and political conflicts of its time. John is a devout Catholic and this also explains why Tolkien might have loved the book a lot. And England is marked at the time by the tensions between Catholics and Protestants. He serves as a diplomat and a spy, working for various influential figures. It is considered a masterpiece of the Victorian era. The next book I have for you, and I actually have a copy of a book of this author, it is William Morris, of course. I have read News from Nowhere. I must say it wasn't my cup of tea. Um, his writing doesn't really resonate with me, but I am glad that I've read it. Tolkien especially liked The House of the Wolfins and The Roots of the Mountains and other works. He once mentioned the influence of Morris in a letter to Professor Forster in 1960. The topic was the dead marches from the Lord of the Rings and Tolkien wrote, they owe more to William Morris and his Huns and Romans as in the house of the wolflings or the roots of the mountains. Apparently it's quite clear that the roots of the mountains by William Morris was an inspiration for Tolkien. So what is that novel about? It was published in 1889 and it is a fantasy novel. It apparently draws inspiration from mythology, from Norse mythology actually, and medieval epics, which explains why Tolkien would have been fond of that novel. We have two tribes, the Dalesmen and the Wolflings. The Wolflings are warriors and the Dalesmen are this peaceful kind of farming people. And despite their differences, they've always gotten along. But then one day a group of outlaws attacks their village and they must work together to defeat them. It's one of the major works of William Morris. It is seen as a significant contribution to the fantasy literature. The next work is the book of fairy tales by Andrew Lang. This was one of Tolkien's childhood favorites. Andrew Lang was a Scottish poet 
a novelist, a literary critic and a collector of fairy tales. He is best known for the Colored Fairy Books, which is a series of 12 collections. The Blue Fairy Book was the first book and it was published in 1889. It contains a selection of diverse stories like Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, uh, Little Riding Hood and some lesser known works too. The next book I have for you is The Marvel's Land of the Snurks by E.A. Wykensmith. Apparently he had been reading this book to his children and he said, I should like to record my own love and my children's love of E.A. Wykensmith marvelous land of the snurks at any rate of the snurk element of that tale and of corbo the gem of dunderheads jewel of a companion in an escapade it was a children's fantasy novel published in 1927. it is actually often cited as a precursor to the hobbit because of its similarity in tone and in themes for example snurks are human-like and small creatures living an idyllic and rustic life. The next novel I have for you is King Solomon's Mines by Sir Ryder Haggard. This is a classic adventure novel that Tolkien loved as a child. It was published in 1885. I tried to read this one and I gave up. It wasn't my thing. But think Indiana Jones. It's like the first book in that genre. It was one of the earliest and most influential works in the lost world genre of adventure fiction. The next work of literature is one that inspired a lot of authors and it is Virgil. This is an epic poem written by Publius Virgilius Maro. It is considered one of the greatest works in Latin literature. I don't know how to really pronounce it, but this is the Aeneid. So sorry. I feel like I'm butchering it. And it is composed between 29 and 19 BCE, which is a long time ago. And it tells a legendary story of a Trojan hero who escapes the burning city of Troy and embarks on a long and arduous journey that eventually leads him to Italy. I have read the Iliad and the Odyssey and this one is next on my list. Virgil actually drew inspiration from the Odyssey and the Iliad. Next we have Shakespeare and let me open with a quote from a Tolkien scholar. While Tolkien's professed dislike of Shakespeare is well known, he was certainly influenced by Macbeth and A Midsummer Night's Dream and his use of King Lear for issues of kingship, madness and succession was hardly surprising. So he wasn't very fond of the bard but he did draw inspiration from some of his works and you might want to read them. I'm slowly working my way through Shakespeare's works and at this moment I have read Othello and Macbeth and I am in the middle of Hamlet. Next we have the brothers Grimm fairy tales and I've actually taken the time to listen to a couple of them. There are audiobooks on Spotify and I was interested in checking them out. So I've listened to three of those short grim fairy tales. They were actually quite enjoyable. I, I don't think I would necessarily buy a book and read them all, but you know, it's fun. It's so gruesome that it becomes kind of funny, if you know what I mean. This is a collection of German folk tales and they were written by brothers Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm. The first volume was published in 1812. What they did was they traveled the world, they listened to other people's stories and recorded them and retold them. A couple of examples are Cinderella, Snow White, Rapunzel, Hansel and Gretel, Little Red Riding Hood and Sleeping Beauty and so on. Their work played a significant role in the shaping of fairy tales. The next author is well known in science fiction literature. It is of course Isaac Asimov and his novel Foundation. It was published in 1951 and Foundation was the first part of what would eventually become seven novels and a bunch of short stories. Okay, so what is it about? It is set in the distant future and humanity has spread across the galaxy and established a vast interstellar empire known as the Galactic Empire. The protagonist is Harry Seldon. He is a brilliant mathematician who has developed a new field of study called, uh, what's that? Psychohistory, okay. 
which combines history, sociology, and mathematical statistics to predict the future behavior of large populations. <laughs> oh god, I don't even have to read it to know that this will be above my head. Stalin predicts the imminent collapse of the galactic empire, which will lead to a dark age lasting thousands of years before a new empire arises. To minimize the duration of this dark age, Stalin establishes the foundation, a secret society dedicated to preserving knowledge and advancing science and technology. Very important work in the science fiction literature, so if you're into science fiction, then I would highly recommend you to pick this one up. Now let's stay with the science fiction novels and go on with C.S. Lewis, his space trilogy. Now I have to say that Tolkien and Lewis were friends, they had a group together called the Inklings and it might have influenced his opinion in some way, but he liked the space trilogy and this is also known as a Cosmic Trilogy or the Ransom Trilogy, so it has three names. It consists of three books and they were published between 1938 and 1945. This is what the first book, which is called Out of the Silent Planet, is about. Um, the book introduces Dr. Elwin Ransom, a philologist who finds himself on a journey to the planet Mars known as Malakendra in the language of its inhabitants. He discovers a world inhabited by intelligent beings. He learns about their culture, language and spiritual beliefs while encountering the dark intentions of human characters who seek to exploit Malakendra. It is apparently also notable for the exploration of Christian themes. I didn't know this even existed, but it falls into the category of Christian science fiction. The final book I have for you is A Voyage to Arcturus by David Lindsay. What did Tolkien say about the book? He said he had read the book with avidity and characterized it as a work of philosophy, religion and morality. It is quite clear to me that Tolkien was looking for religious themes in the novels that he loved. Lindsay was also a Scottish author and it was published in 1920. This is what the novel is about. It follows the journey of a British businessman named Maskell, who upon meeting a mysterious man named Craig is invited to join him on a journey to the distant planet of Torments, which orbits the star Arcturus. Maskell accepts the invitation and embarks on a surreal and metaphysical voyage across the alien landscape of Torments. He encounters a series of bizarre characters, each representing different philosophical and spiritual perspectives. Along the way, he undergoes a profound transformation, both physically and spiritually, as he grapples with questions of identity, morality and the nature of reality. It is known for its complex and abstract narrative, which blends elements of science fiction, fantasy and philosophical allegory. The novel explores themes such as the search for meaning, the conflict between good and evil and the limitations of human perception. At the time of publication it wasn't really such a success, but it is seen as one of the influential works in science fiction. Of course, Tolkien was also very fond of mythology. If you know of any more works that he loved reading, let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if you've read any of these books. I would love to know whether or not you enjoyed them. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.